This is the Danish island of Samsu, located off the east coast of the Jutland Peninsula. It has around 4,000 residents and is a popular vacation spot for mainland Danes. What's unique about it is that it generates almost all the energy it needs from renewable sources. It's become Denmark's archetypal sustainable energy island, with a target of zero emissions by 2008. It all started with an entry into a very unusual competition. Samsø became the energy island because of, uh, you could say, old-time uh, development of the grassroots organizations. They have long time longed for a, a test site or a real, uh, real full-scale project where they could uh, describe the development of renewable energy so far up till now. And what we would like was a demonstration project where it was possible to see a complete Danish transition to 100% renewable energy. And for that they needed uh, an example like an island where you could measure everything imported and exported. And uh, they, they wrote out a competition and uh, luckily Samsø won this competition. The, the aim was in 10 years to develop 100% tr transition to 100% renewable energy. I have to mention also that one of the things in the competition was we had to base the development on proven technology. So it's, it wouldn't be a test project so much as a, as a demonstration of what was on the market. And for electricity, we established 11 1 megawatt wind turbines, and they produce now what is equivalent to a yearly consumption of energy in Samsø. So we could say we are 100% self-supplied by electricity. When it comes to heating, uh, we, we say that we, ha we, we utilize what, whatever sources of biomass we have on the island. And uh, we have established four district heating systems and a number, we estimate about 250 private household uh, plants or installations. And we are quite sure we are, have, have reached about 75% of the heating demand is now transferred from oil, electricity to renewable energy as solar biomass. In Denmark, local self-sufficiency in energy is not exactly a new phenomenon. When the electricity started, we had small electricity companies all over the, the country. Uh, there were three, four villages around an electricity plant and it was owned by the local people. Uh, and before that, small turbines was owned by local people. So, so it wasn't so far, that, uh, far away from, from history that we could do these things. Local ownership was a key feature of Samsu's response to the energy competition. Denmark has, has a long history of, of creating cooperatives. So it's not so strange and, and, and new for us to, to think in cooperatives. So when we established these new, very big turbines, we, we opened for shares. Everybody could come, could come and, and claim to be interested in one share or 10 shares or 100 shares. And we, we ended up having two cooperative-owned wind turbines at the island and uh, two cooperative wind turbines offshore. Over a thousand people have put their money into Samsu's offshore wind turbines. Local farmer Jorgen Tranberg was one of the team involved in the tricky task of raising the money for the full set of 10 turbines. It's uh, big money and uh, big contracts and so on. And it was uh, difficult to get them, uh, the money in the bank uh, and uh, some of the people who want to buy them, they drop it again. One month where we only have uh, sold nine. So one day, Difco come and say, oh, we want to buy one, so we was going. And A cooperative of Samsu Islanders was amongst the earliest investors. Its 450 members now own the turbine closest to the shore. The municipality of Samsu owns five more, on behalf of the entire community of the island. Jorgen himself is co-owner of turbine number eight, as well as one of the 11 on the island itself. He's made a huge personal investment in helping Samsu meet its energy target. The, the wind turbines on the land uh, cost 6 million crowns and uh, one on the sea cost 24 million crowns, so there I have put 12 million crowns. In all, that's getting on for two million pounds. And I could only get the money in the bank because I have uh, the one on the land and that was a good one. We have a good place down here and we were five farmers together who uh, built five wind turbines on each land. And that was quite easy to build them and uh, get the money and that was going very well. 
From the farmer's point of view, wind turbines are a good investment. In Denmark, a lot of farmers think it's a good idea with the windmills. Um, they had look at the money and there's uh, good money in it. I own this windmill. This is mine. Yes. <laughs> and you can only, in Denmark, you can only have one windmill by yourself. So is the rules now. Before you could have two windmills, you could have one on, on your SE number, that's your farming number, and you could have one on your person number, so you could have two windmills. But you can't, I think it's 10, 8, 10 years ago, they stopped that. But I can have this one, and then I can have part in the windmills on the sea, and I have, I have it. I have invested 2 million Danish crowns out there, and this windmill has cost 6 million. So I have uh, invested 8 million Danish crowns in uh, windmills. A lot of money for my little farming. That's about £700,000. The return on the money comes from the sale of the electricity generated by the turbines. This windmill here gives the, the profit it has promised and a little bit more, so I can only be satisfied with this. Striving like they had promised it to do, there's not troubles with it, and if there's a little trouble with it, bonus, the company I buy the windmill of, is very quick to be here and get it repaired. The windmill I have on the sea is also a bonus mill, and we hope the money out there will be good also. Morgans is not alone in his views. Nearly all of the island's adults have money invested in the wind turbines. For the community as a whole, the turbines play a crucial role in reducing carbon emissions and giving the island a self-sufficient source of electrical energy. The offshore turbines export electricity to other parts of Denmark, providing an emission surplus that can be offset against CO2 emissions from the ongoing, but diminishing, use of fossil fuels on the island. Self-sufficiency in energy for heating has proved a slightly harder problem to solve. Once again, the strategy involves both cooperative and individual ownership, a mix of district and individual heating systems. This is Samsu's biggest single investment in heating technology, a combined solar wood chip district heating system. It uses mainly local wood chip waste and is fully automated. The human operator of the system comes in every second day to check everything is working well. Water is first heated as it flows through the 2,500 square metres of solar panels. It's heated further as it passes through the wood chip fired boiler. The hot water is pumped around the main town to heat workplaces and domestic dwellings. The solar thermal panels make a major contribution in the summer months. During the rest of the year, the plant relies much more on wood chip waste. Burning biomass is carbon neutral. It all comes from renewable sources and does not impact on the island's net emissions of CO2. Away from the district heating zones, islanders are turning to a variety of new technologies to replace their traditional oil-burning boilers and stoves. This small-scale heating system is based around 19 square metres of solar thermal panels. It's connected to a large hot water tank under the floor in the central part of the house. We get the water heated inside uh, and when the, the water tank is um, heat enough, we have 250 litres, then the rest of the heat, because that's sometimes the problem, then you get a lot of heat and you cannot use it. In our house, the first room you come into is the heart of the house, and it's where we protect the heat, because it's the middle, the middle room in the house, so the heat will go up and to the other rooms. When the sun has warmed our 250 litres tank up, then, you know, there's also heat for the feet, for the foot, and also for the wet clothes, because sometimes it's rain in Denmark, you know, and we have a, a lot of wet clothes coming in, and suddenly there's also, you know, room for that, the sun delivering us that kind of heat. That's totally luxus for me. Other people on the island are choosing to make use of locally available biomass resources, 
and are installing wood and straw-fired heating plants or farm-based biogas units. All of this means new and rather different work for people like the island's plumber. He had, had been forced to rethink his, his business. He used to sell oil furnaces and, and the customers relied on this guy. When he came out with his, uh, with his uh, things in, 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 for, for selling for, uh, as, as a salesman, they would ask him for advice and say to him, how do you think we should, we should develop these things? What about solar energy? And he would say in the old times, he said, solar energy, well, some people say it's good, but I mean that oil furnaces, they are reliable and we know how to handle them. And the customer would say, yes, that's, that's what we do then, because they relied on the plumber more than they relied on me, because they knew I was in favor of renewable energy. That was my job. But when the plumber, he got used to this and could see that he had a new a product in his, in his factory, then he would, of course, be interested in selling a, a furnace of some kind. Uh, I prefer a, a wood furnace or a wood pellet furnace and a solar uh, panel and, and do both. So he'd recommend for the consumer and the customers now, well, many people have now a, 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 a double project because uh, a double installation, because then in the summertime you can shut off your, your traditional furnace and, and only supply your house from, from solar energy. <laughs> so people will do that. So we have to prove that there's a business potential in it, that it pays to do these things and, and that the community will back it. So now I think you could go around asking in the streets and the most people will say, it has been good for Samsung to have the renewable energy island. Good for development, good for business and good for, for jobs. The generally positive attitude of the population, plus individual and community investment, means the island is well on the way to meeting all of its sustainability targets for heat and power. Emissions from transport are proving a much tougher nut to crack. The island is still very much reliant on carbon-based vehicle fuels. With surplus electricity from the wind turbines, electric vehicles seem like an obvious solution. But existing vehicles have quite a lot of limitations in their use, and the island authorities are waiting for the next generation of electric vehicles to become more widely available. It's likely that these will be powered by fuel cells that run on hydrogen gas. On Samsu, the hydrogen could be locally produced, again using surplus electricity from the offshore turbines. Hydrogen can also be burned in modified combustion engines. Hydrogen combustion engines offer zero carbon solutions across the board, from private cars to public transport. One option for the island is to create an infrastructure similar to this one in Munich, which was the first commercial hydrogen filling station in the world. Hydrogen powered buses are being trialled in many cities across Europe, but at the moment there are no affordable, commercially available hydrogen powered cars. We've written to the EU, said that we are ready to be a demonstration project for some hydrogen cars also. And hopefully we'll be in a project where we can, we can make a cooperation with other projects where, where it'll be a demonstration. Uh, I mean, we can develop a demonstration project on Samsung. We have the electricity where we can produce the hydrogen. So we already have the means or the sources of energy available. But, uh, but it, it's a little bit out in the future. But one alternative fuel is already undergoing small-scale trials. We have a small demonstration project, uh, according to Transport, where we are utilizing plant oil. We press, we have a rapeseed press, and we press virgin oil, and we can use it directly on 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 uh, a little bit uh, transformed diesel engines. They have to, they need to have a, a preheat heating system and some new valves also. And then, then you, you'll be able to use um, plant oil for transportation. That'll be mainly for, for trucks and, and diesel engines, cars, not so much. Eric Anderson is one of the farmers involved in the trial. I think uh, running on vegetable oil is just thrilling. You know, you know fossil oil, pump it up and refine it and uh, transport it. And here you can just take it from the seed put the seed in the presser and, and have the oil. And uh, the oil is just ready for putting on the tractor. And I choose it because of the renewable thing and uh, it's uh, CO2, a new product. And uh, it's uh, an idealistic thing for me to, to do. Because I can feed the cake for the cows, it's a very good protein source. 
and uh, the cows have no use for the oil. So what's it like actually driving the tractor? It smells like a uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And uh, it, it's the same thing as driving a tractor running on fossil, fossil uh, oil. It's the same power and uh, it's no, uh, no different from, except from, from the, the smell. It might be smelly, but it's sustainable and carbon neutral. The problem of reducing carbon emissions is compounded by the fact that Samsu is a popular tourist destination. It's not just residents and visitors' vehicles that count towards Samsu's emissions tally, it's the ferries as well. The solution they came up with was a localised emissions trading scheme. That is why we erected 10 offshore wind turbines. And that was meant to be kind of a compensation for the CO2 emission from the cars. So we could then say that we cut down the CO2 emission by producing CO2-free energy in the same amount at the offshore wind turbines. In the short term, the turbines more than offset the emissions from vehicles and oil-burning appliances. In the future, they may well supply the energy for generating hydrogen used as vehicle fuel. The hydrogen could also be used in domestic and industrial boilers or CHP units. Samsu is well on track to achieve its 10-year target of 100% renewable energy. <laughs>